Good evening to all the audience who have been waiting to listen to People's Go Talk Show and all the soldiers rank and file in the military who are trying to find a way to leave the military. I would like to wish you a very good evening. My name is Yete and I'll be your moderator for today's talk show. From the People's School program, we have been uh, running this uh, the Way of Thought uh, talk show program, and this is our 32nd episode. And for that uh, spring revolution that we have been working on is not targeted towards individuals uh, or the leaders, but we are looking at the system. We're looking at the ideology, the, the culture, the practice, and that's what we are trying to change to build a new society that we all desire, that we all want. So that's something we are working on. So in today's program, we have, uh, we're talking about the future the future military. What kind of future military are we aspiring to? That uh, what we also that we have invited CDM officers and CDM soldiers will be discussing this topic of the future military. So we have uh, that. Um, that right now, although the military was once born out of the out of the support of the people, and they were active for the protection of the people. Nowadays, the AF military simply is writing their power, is writing this public budget, public budget in order to uh, use the top against them, um, even against the people. So we want to ensure that the future army that we build, future military we build, that protects the people at, uh, always, that they're consistently, and that they will never turn their guns back towards the people. That, uh, that is a that a future f f army that we want is a federal, is a, is a not only professional, but also also will have a public interest in mind. So that's what we'll be discussing. And we also have invited guests joining us in our Zoom room as well. Okay, may have some technical issues, so please uh, bear with us and why we are getting our moderator back online. Sorry about that, my head, uh, my clothes. Sorry about that. I'm back. So, first of all, I would like to invite uh, Captain Almuta. As said uh, that, uh, why did you want to join the military? And that uh, I also like to know that uh, that uh, what was that, that? What was your experience inside the inside the army? Because the military always talk about uh, working for uh, the being nationalists, also working for national. And the frontal interests of the people, but the way people see its military is operating merely for a military elite, uh, for a handful of uh, leadership as well. So, what kind of oppression or bullying is there inside the military? Can you also share it with your own experience and feelings? Uh, you have 10 minutes. Thank you for your question. Since I was very young, I wanted to be a soldier. I wanted to be an officer. I, that's why I have joined the military. And I wanted to be a military officer. I wanted to be a soldier. To be a serviceman is to protect the people. I wanted to uh, that uh, to protect the people from the external and the internal threats. And that's, uh, that's what I want to do. I want to be a soldier. So once I've joined the military, then with my ideology and that uh, that uh, we want our military to be a, the international like her military, not just on the physically, but also uh, that is mindset as well. And we need to have ideology of valuing the people and we come from the people and we work for the people and we support the people. That's what we want to be. But however, that is also challenge where we see a lot of uh, bullying, especially there are also where the systems of people where 
and you try to cultivate their own uh, followers and to protect them each other and sort of like creating click as well and that uh, we also that uh, you know that if you don't know if you don't have a have a somebody to protect you at the development protection then as uh, you could become uh, that you could become a target or you could become a crash in this world and that's the practice the military has been doing the for so that um so in the future, in the future military, we want uh, we want it to be more based on the meritocracy. Those who have the quality, those who have their skills, who should be become an officer rather than those who know more people, who know more. Than. Because what we want is that, uh, and that, uh, that. Uh, so a lot of a lot of there are also that when we look at all the this uh, training school is that you can give money to get opposition you can become an officer and that's what we are seeing in the military uh, training schools and that as well if you look at those uh, the training schools so all the training schools for the captains or the uh, for the majors officers you just give money to get position because they are giving money to buy it why they are doing it to get a position is because uh, they they rather because there has always been a corruption that uh, always uh, you know, everybody wants to be the commander in chief, and that uh, to become a commander in chief, they have in mind that to get once they get a position, they have the power to do things, and then the, the the power also means that they will also get more income, the position. So they want uh, they are fighting for that they are fighting for this uh, position, and once they get a position, they can do business and they can do whatever they want as a business, and that will be it for them. They will be set for life. When you look at the foot soldiers on the ground, that uh, they. The, the if you if you become a retire if you take retirement from the military based on our experience and once you retire they don't they don't have a place to live at that uh, and that uh, some of them are physically uh they, they have lost uh, physical mobility and then when you look at that those who are selling you know books on the ground and some people even become uh, you know that uh, that uh, beggars literally beggars in the street that the ministry of defense that has uh, a lot of budget from the state and a lot of funding from the state and that uh, that will become a difficult that was and that uh, you know the all the taxes that have been collected by the people and that uh that uh, it is become even more difficult. Where, where do the, all the funding go? Because everything is uh, becoming abused and appropriated by the leaders. Now that we are seeing is we look at their foot soldiers on the ground that uh, they don't have any, the, even the infrastructure they have that they are, it doesn't meet the standards. And more than that, uh, that. Uh, they live where they, the places where they live it can be it can be really bad and that uh, that uh, these the full soldiers like if you look even even the time that the BDA or the one the military were first established at the time basic infrastructure for the full soldiers were better than what is currently now the biggest changes is that where the military the top leadership and their cronies all their families are that you know that uh, are enjoying that the fruits and that the fruits of the fruits of the all the hard work and the badges but however the full soldiers are poor they are in desperate conditions, they are malnourished, they have not been able to so let the rule because when a soldier died, that the military the general took care. They just that doesn't bother them. So what I'm saying is that right now that uh, they, the military will often talk about the nationalism, about the putting the interests of the national, if it was the nation of the civil of the people and the religion. But no, in reality, since the coup, the way they have added the, some of the companies, the way they have added it, they are focusing more on protecting their private companies, privately owned companies. They are also worried that uh, that uh, they could be they could be uh, the action against against taking them, and they think that if the actions were taken against them uh, for the crimes they are committed right now, then they think that they will risk uh, losing uh, they are they are losing what they have hold now. So that uh, that's why they are trying to steal the own power. They were able. To to brainwash and that people who are not able to think they were able to follow blindly and that's what is happening and these are i would say that this is an elite that it won't even be 30 people who are at the most well at the top and who are also trying in their way to to protect their interests inside the military there are a lot of oppression as well as on the persecution and bullying it's of a, I, I myself i mean we have a suffer from it or from the oppression so i know how horrible that can be as it even one to uh to get uh do what i want to marry to have to have a wedding that i will not be given leave as uh, that uh you know that uh, some of them who came to uh you know who came to uh, help me celebrate my marriage they were arrested and put into prison and i feel really bad and that the person who came to they will not give leave us uh, because if you want to uh do a, have a that um you know somebody who came to help because of an officer because because i'm celebrating a military and they said that no you're not allowed to come there and that uh, they 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 were like 
they were as a prison as well. That is like, you know, they were given the the that they were like saying that they missed their duties and that uh and that is also that they would have they were even arrested and detained for the put in the break for for that as well. And that while I was serving, it is also one of the experience that we have seen as well. Thank you. Thank you, Captain, for sharing with us. Now, I would like to invite uh, Captain Kibabato. Why did you join the military, sister? And also that uh, during your, that, uh, and that also, how did you see the military, especially, you know, while you're serving for the ground soldiers, that how, what are the, what are the issues? What are the challenges? What are the experience of ground soldiers? After listening to Captain, um, that we know that there has been exploitation as well as other bullying and oppression, and yet the ground soldiers remain loyal to the military. How do they make sure that the military, uh, that the holidays of military have strong allegiance for its people, despite the op oppression, and that's yet, they are still loyal to the military. What are the propaganda? How do they how do they brainwash them? How do they make sure, despite the problem challenges, that re, they remain inside the military? Thank you. In the 1988 generation, I was only uh, in the fourth grade now, but I still remember what happened. I was from the ARV region and uh, that it was uh, considered as a brown area. There were a lot of uh, violent crackdown as well as uh, there were also have been uh, that a lot of it. I was still young, but I didn't know, but I knew it has been uh, that is horrible as well. The, I, I, the United States, I finished uh, that does, uh, I finished uh, high school, I finished uh, high school and then the universities are uh, open and closed. It, things are not that stable, but uh, I was uh, for many reasons, I would, there were opportunity to join the military I was not interested in it, uh, but uh, some, the, the, some of the people say, well, this is a formal civil servant. You will contribute to the nation, so join it. So that uh, through the encouragement of others, I was not interested. I was enthusiastic, but I joined the military. Once I joined, I be, I try to be dutiful, whatever I am in the hospital or I am in that um, in the school, I will be doing my duty as a nursing officer. However, that when I joined, uh, since the time I joined, the military has already is a feeling inside uh, internally because there are a lot of uh, self-interest and that also in terms of dignity uh, there is we see also less and less as well and that in a way that they can be uh, they are just trying to uh, you know make benefit out of uh, everything so always expect it so in the in the military hospitals often the commanders well they would be uh, you know getting um they will be getting uh, the interest for the as well so for the grounds that when the ground soldiers who came to the hospital as a as a as a as a as a, as a patient and they are getting many out of the many out of many out of these uh, food allow, allocated for the for the food soldier and that is very much uh, below their professionalism and dignity as well and that um, that, that there, we are also have medicine uh, provided for the to take care of the patients and that but these are not uh, so what will become will be is that those are the medical supplies and these are uh, commanders will work together to make LD the often them the, when they will go and get the medicine medical products Running equipment from the pro from the equipment that this will be lost on the way. Once that they came back to the military, when they go back to the military hospital, when they allocate medication medication to that to the wards for those who are what in charge who you are in as nurses who are in charge of this. And when you go to the get your medication, that you know it's like uh, you know the way they treat it as like uh, we are getting just get this um, medicine for our own need as well. You know that a kitchen for the patients is supposed to provide. Uh, you know that we give uh, like diet one to three or the extra diet we have a. Uh, the special uh, distinctions to provide uh, uh, the much needed uh, nutrition to the patients that the, the patients are not getting. It is not happening, not just in one military hospital. It is happening everywhere. And they don't, uh, they don't, they, they, they are not professional, they don't know, they do not follow the rules and that they will do that. And that, uh, so for, uh, you know, for educated, uh, in a way for educated professional, that is really is embarrassing as well. You know, people, have, we see that people have 100 years of lifetime, but no people don't live 100 years. In the 70, the 80 years, often the, the, the because they will definitely will suffer the karma or the, the karma of the, the, the negative things they have done before. You know, when you're in your less, when you are in the blessed part of your, your, 
your time that you have to give that but you have to die with the, uh, the guilty conscience that i would never take it and that's what that's one of the main reasons i cannot stay there when you have uh, the majority of the people who are doing the corruption taking bribery and you know literally taking food out of the patients and the, the medicine out of the patient is it is i would that is below human dignity but when the majority of the people are practice as asian it is hard to see and they wouldn't like you because you won't follow the rules you won't be part of the crimes as well there is so much injustice against the soldiers there was so much injustice against as well because in the medical call we have the doctors and nurses and that are two major generations and that uh and there, among the doctors, there are those who really is uh, helpful and do, like others, like uh, uh, brothers and sisters. There are also those who want to, you know, uh, look down on you as well. And that uh, when you said often that uh, that uh, often the commanders of these forces are also uh, 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 also that um, uh, are the doctors, so they would look down on the, the nurses and the, because of the military, even if you are being uh, the persecutor, even if you are being uh, looked down, even if you are being uh, pressured to do things you don't want to, you cannot talk back, you cannot speak up, you cannot speak up for yourself and that uh, they, they often they would take their, you know, but they would take their benefits and then uh, all the duties that you have, they, nobody wants to carry out will be pushed over to the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the nurses as well and that what happened is that when we opened the COVID center, and that uh, one of uh, the surgeons, he has a diabetes. He's very thin. He's very thin, and he has a diabetic. And he was assigned at the COVID center. It was not just once and twice. And he was uh, was assigned several that he is diabetes. He all he or he is already. Uh, the, everybody knows that he is a very. Uh, he already have a this condition, and that is he will not be able to withstand it. And I feel really sad about him being posted at the COVID center. And that also they focus more on the uh, the focus more on their own interests and they would not think of they would they were always a bully and also a strike the 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 um the others as well and that huh in addition, also that uh, there is always, if you look at the, the the assets and properties of the that of the that of the generals and the and the foot soldiers are very different. When you gain position, and then they said the position and the position came with the power, and they use the power to be able to well, to to get them to get them rights to do certain things to can abuse them so that they can enrich themselves. And they don't think it's a tradition. They don't see it as a bribery. They don't see it as a corruption. They don't see it as lack of professionalism that they once they will do whatever they can to get the position once they get the position then they are in power and then it's now to for them to make money had hand over face and that uh, that's how they would uh, they they will fully follow the tradition and practice as well and then for food soldiers that how uh, you know they don't have a solution they don't have a decent living wage in addition to that we have Mumi. it's a it's an insurance company owned by by the by by the by uh by the dictator army online and we have to contribute to the life insurance we also have to save money and that the sugu soldiers get only uh, uh about uh, uh, that hundred and fifty thousand just and they have to contribute to that uh to the insurance claim as well as uh, that they have difficulty and that often the wives of the food soldiers cannot uh, uh, cannot uh, walk outside. They have they have been given a lot of duties as well because they don't want people to get exposure to the outside world. They don't want the fives of the soldiers to go outside and walk and realize that this is wrong. This is not true. And they don't. They are very much afraid of the rebellions of the soldiers. What they would do is they would make sure given a lot of duties as well. Once. Once I will let me let me tell you a story that uh, the we call them the that uh, the comrades said that uh, often they said that the children have to leave their children behind and that uh, some of them the children they cannot take care of their children that when the mother died they have to leave the child behind and that you know the some of that there have been a crazy stories where the the the, the, the parents are already dead you know because of the girl. they cannot take care of their children that they want that the child is uh, left alone without anybody to care for and that the children got in an accident and. Who do not get the do not get the assistance they need it, and that's because of the abuse. That's because of the uh, that uh, the abuse of power, and that uh, you know that the ground the soldiers are losing their basic human rights as well. That soldiers are also civil servants, but the service we don't get the rights as a civil servant. We don't also get uh, the human rights as well. The basic human rights are the wars. I would say that. Uh, 
We don't want that to happen again. We don't want the soldiers to could they give up couldn't use that when they for the future federal army, we hope that uh, it's an army that that guarantees the human rights and the they lives it right as well. When we like uh, Captain Hobbs has shared before, when you retire, when you have a turn to take, when you have a pension, and then uh, that uh, we have to we have to find a way to be able to face a, a great with the graduate we have. We cannot buy a land a small lot of land because of the inflation in the prices and that's the military's lack of uh, the accountability and responsibility and that uh, if you look at the education level of the ground soldiers about their the children's education level they cannot take care of their children because they are very busy they are overwhelmed a lot of them that doesn't even finish a lot of children do not finish high school with a high school they can only get the low level job entry jobs and they will not be able to have a nice life and they will not be able to have a good life and often they end up with a bad day. that also is response i would say that the generous are responsible their children are going Going to their children are going abroad to study in foreign universities and they have a lot of also have that that you know a lot of richness uh, they have uh, that but how near about that is are uh, using abusing uh, that they are they are uh, that that's that their friends they they are their full soldiers in the end and that uh, they were not treated as friends they are not treated and for the good of the people a lot of people knew about this because you know that in the, the in the military that you have to be um that uh, that about 30 percent of them is taking advantage of it uh, by you know by being a uh, play to their commanders as well and that uh that uh, you know most of the uh, most of the soldiers have to be uh, uh oppressed and they have to be um that uh, they have to suffer they cannot speak up we hear a lot of these something uh, they would uh, they, are, they are afraid to speak up because so uh, you know that like, uh, even if at the taba it's supposed to be a meeting where you can where you can speak up but i have seen experience if you speak up in those meeting then you will be oppressed further so nobody dares to speak up and take suffering silence and you just uh, sort of like uh, complain to each other about what you have suffered Thank you for sharing. In the next round as well, I will also ask like how, 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 how do you want to see the, the, the how you want to see the future the future military? I will ask I will ask you the question. That's again. Now the, I would like to ask uh, Captain Wright and uh, Captain Wright uh, that um and the two that to ask you the question. I would like to ask the same question to Captain Wright as well. And that, uh, so why did you, I will ask you the same question. Why did you try the military? Why do you want to become a soldier? You know, the, the aspirations that you have, you know, the expectations you have to be a soldier and the reality when you join the military, how different are they? And that, uh, so was the military really uh, working for the nationalism, for the for the interests of the people or are they, is the military merely running for the interests of, uh, you know, certain group of people? I like to know your opinions thank you thank you for inviting me and thank you for your question well i joined the military it's like uh, you know i think in the other talk show also i have shared that like i said it goes well. i grew up in the military at uh, the milieu in a way so in a way i have attached matter uh, now i'm close to the military so you know it's in that sense that though that uh, when i finish uh, high school then i it become quite natural that uh, my parents also encourage me my parents are also poor and they will not be able that they will not be able to support me so that you know my parents cannot can you not know, have the means Means to others. So when I see that the parents, I say that well, if I join the military, then then if I go to university, then I the, the family does do not have to support me, and that my family does not have to support me. That I, I, if I try very hard, that then if I I will get recognition, I will get my merits, I will get be acknowledged by my merit. When I was young, I didn't know I didn't know about the you know is out of military, but I grew up around the military, so I'm also understand the flow of the military. Of course, there are things I don't like. I don't like this when I was yeah but there's a when i became a serviceman that it became i see that how horrible the system is or the how that the system has been uh, badly run as well to tell the to tell the truth the firstly that the, the the bad things about the military is that inequality inequality among the soldiers when you say rather than i would say inequality is like a modern slavery because military is a new form of a, a slavery in a way because you know that uh, this that uh, you know the soldiers are not named slaves but they we are treated they are soldiers are treated like slaves for the for the generals and those who are power and that uh, this is slavery as a slave that we have no speech we have no right of uh, speaking no no 
freedom of speech and they that they would tend they have to uh that eye blindness if you are they ask you to do step on the thought that you have to that you have no choice but to follow their orders blindly and thus the inequality the inequality at the ground on the ground level is so bad that if you look at their regiments say uh, you know that uh, there if you look at the reserve forces or like uh, captain has said more like medical corps these corps are in a way a little bit better than us you know because uh, because you have experts as well and that uh, and that um, that it also that they also have a different also uh as well so, so they have a, you have ability to think as well that uh so i mean compared to others i think it will be very different as well so that uh you know the, in terms of slavery what is slavery that is harder that it is harder that that um uh, that it's so for the soldiers out there like a surgeon or corporal and then the lieutenant and the commander and the rsi they are the other 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 the non-commissioned officers from the officers from the uh the lieutenant to the junior general and that uh that it is also uh, saying that there, there are different levels that uh, there is always the system is collaborating at different levels as well and that uh, you know when you look at the army that most of the full soldiers are and educated they are older as well that uh, especially when you look at that you know we don't have new soldiers joining in though they have that to what they have been like some of the soldiers who are also joined that that they would uh, those who are 30 or 35 they would lie them they would lie they would lie on paper they say oh he's 25 or 28 and these are what kind of people are they, I mean, these people, these these soldiers are that uh, you know. Whenever um, there is a problem, these are the you know. Whenever you have a kid, these are like they are good for nothing. They cannot be useful in any way, and these are being sent as recruitment. So the problem is they are uneducated and they are now not going to do so. They don't you know. They also don't know what their rights are. They also know that uh, they seem to have this kind of. They kind of have the. They, this is what I'm giving up, and this is what I should get. They may they, if they can get a regular food for a day. They have a. They can and their way of living. They can also have a like a daily food. Daily food that, that's enough. That's enough for them. That's more than enough. If they have like if they have a like a you know they may have to save for ten months to get money. They may even to save like twenty thousand just a day. If they can get a smartphone, they'll be happy. And that's how they are. That's how they're there. So they are in a way. It also is uh, said to that they are. And these are uh, these soldiers are being. Uh, you know, when you have a uh, surgeons or that uh, you know we call it that those who are was that those who have uh, like a good knowledge uh, that they will abuse them. They they will they will promise them we'll get you this and we'll get you that, and they will lie to them as well because you know uh, for example like a night and and a, a commodity that costs twenty thousand. Well, I have you. I will have you buy it because you cannot afford it. I will have you buy it. And yet that. Uh, they would, uh, you know, that uh, a twenty thousand community where well, they would, you know, sell them back to the soldier for fifty thousand. Just you pay at the same level. So those who are in that uh, hold that uh, who take care of the logistic and they would take out of uh, the soldiers as well. In addition to that, not giving them all the food they are ideal, so that uh, you know, in reality, uh, that when you that, that with the money we get for the salary, we can buy for them. We can get food. We can get meat. But in reality, that uh, you know, you don't even get a piece of chicken you know it's a very small small very small piece and you don't get uh and that and also for the rice also they will make sure that they sell they can sell everything and that uh, what they will also do is that they would uh, you know they abuse them that to be able to uh, get money out of it as well so this is also that that's what we are facing as well and that um and the, what happened is that, uh, and these corpor these corporals, and they also have to, uh, the, get, get, they, they are being exploited by the junior officer. Say, okay, I give you responsibility for this. And that you have that, they, they, you are the responsible. But they, this, how did you do that? How did you do that? Then the sergeant or the corporal could not lie. And then they said that the, the, the officer knew about it as well. Then say, okay, that's all fine. But we have seen it as well. There's are those who will say, no, accept this. And they most of they say, okay, you can do this. Okay, they will say they say no, you're you know you're wrong, you cannot do this. Nobody will reprimand them. They will say, Yes, you're good at that. Okay, then once you sell the rice, when you sell the extra right, then and then uh, I want uh, this and I want that as well, and that uh, that is will be uh, that uh, uh that uh, and that also uh, that so they were often uh, talk back as well. So that uh, you know, often uh, we have that uh that it can also be uh, difficult to. So, uh, for me, is that I have 
to speak up. I have to say right there. If it is not the if it is not right, I wouldn't do it. But if I'm given orders, I have to do that. But whatever I know that this person, I have already said, okay, you I have to follow orders. So I do the order, but I know this leader is not giving the right orders or the order is at the right way. These are the challenges we face on the ground level. And often, like uh, the like colonels or the senior or the major generals, and that they have a lot of businesses and they do projects and that like others companies have to forgot Ami Momi is an insurance or the MEH of Myanmar Economic Holding or the MEC Myanmar Economic Corporation or the Inwa Bank. These are military what they do is they are using the salaries of the soldiers uh, do they as well. They use it to invest and then they use it to invest in their own endeavors and they are getting the they're getting the benefit and then they will give the so in a way I would say that they will take all the the flesh of the meat and they will just uh, just throw us a bow at well. You know, sometimes uh, you know they will not give food. Uh, they, uh, even if there are bows, uh, they would rather feed their, the dogs they keep at their house rather than give it to the soldiers. So after the coup, what we have noticed in particular is that uh, that the challenges is that uh, like a mitel that telecom towers uh, that uh, some of the mitel towers are uh, you know that they are they have insurance from the army movement company so that they give us insurance for that as well and when these towers got uh, that uh, we knew that before you know, when the revolutionary forces were destroyed the mitel telecom towers and they have to compens give compensation his that's that's uh, that's the commander in chief uh, sense company so that's why they are uh, this uh, but they soldiers to guard security what kind of people they put the old people that older people and that uh, you know that they work like rsi that the new rsis are like uh, they are very old and they are almost uh, that you know and they will be given a side duty to as well are, they don't have no recruitment they will just get five or six or seven people if something happens and they don't have any they have nothing they can do they will just die because they have nowhere and they don't care if they die also either what they want is that their business now be in danger that is uh, they don't care about the soldiers they don't care about the lives of the soldiers because the lives of the soldier uh, do not have a, do not have any uh, value any folly for them or not even for the the popcorn or the sunflower seed they were just true and they because we see a lot of uh, that injustice and if a soldier, a full soldier, will speak up and that uh, you know speak the truth. Then it is very risky that we call it that we call it uh, and that we call it them as uh, they will say that uh, that uh, you are speaking up. But by the when we need they think that they will do whatever they they will send them into prison. They will shoot. They will shoot and kill them. It's really bad now because right now those who are the some of the commanding officers are that and I've heard the stories and that uh, that they would even they say that uh, they say that. Uh, this they will kill the soldier and then they say that those who are they will say that they made it into a, as if he was killed in action they make this threat if you don't follow the order they will kill you should you kill and they will make you sure that you got killed in you got killed in battle so that it is a modern form of slavery and that um that uh, they would uh, destroy the Buddha physically and psychologically a, 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 a young soldier they wanted to go back home they went to go because his mother passed away he wants to go back and he didn't get leave to go home because the security is more important than that you should not think about your family right now that uh, and that uh, they will say this but in reality that uh, you know these are uh, the, the soldiers uh, they want to go to there for the to to, to to go there to go there to be a good son to be uh, to say goodbye to his mother even if he cannot do anything he can even if he cannot support he wants to be there for the last for, for the to see her the one last time and that kind of he cannot able to say goodbye and that is also the base that did not that, that that's how the soldiers are not getting their basic rights in addition, that uh, that uh, in the the, the military, the military uh, is also used as uh, used as that the you know staff for the staff for the activities as well. Like uh, for example, like the military has a uh, has uh, the agricultural and livestock livestock breeding. That if you look at the standard army, you know which soldiers are growing a uh, paddy or you know you know that you no know, that just uh, you know just uh, you know farming. No, they have their people to do that. That's why those who will do the to that will do that. You have to get a, you know they have to give them a salary to get them. Only then we get a quality level production as well. That that the soldiers and the corporals and they will be sent there as well, and they are being used in such a way as well. And that uh, that they are using the uh, the manpower as a way to do that as well. And they will use them. They will abuse them. That's how they are. That's what. That's why also a lot of uh, a lot of full soldiers and that uh, they that also they lose their moral and that uh, and they don't want to walk. They don't want to do. They don't want to follow others. And really, that's why they, because they are facing after the coup. We 
are seeing even more oppression, even more uh, exploitation and abuse as well. Because in the current situation that, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, now you can kill, the, if you can, if you're killing each other, they don't, they will not take any action about this as well. They will do whatever they want. So whatever they say is true. So the soldier could be easily killed by other soldiers without any, and those, the kill, the perpetrators won't get any repercussion. The same for this well. The, some of the soldiers have to grow a uh, paddy. Some of them have to go uh, the sugar cane. You don't get, uh, you don't get workers that uh, you have an officer, you get a you had a surgeon, you had an officer, and you have 10 acres to grow paddy. You don't get any workers that, uh, you know, how can these three people do that as well? And that, uh, though, if you have to uh, get uh, farm workers, then you don't get, uh, you don't get uh, the reimbursed for that as well, and that they want uh, cheap workers as well, and that, uh, that uh, if you have to give them 10 uh, 10,000 just, then they will only pay 5,000 just, and they have to make sure that you get it. If the, the, if the this paddy field does not uh, have a yield, then the officer and the corporal and the officer there, our salaries will be cut. That uh, the captain will get will not will not get the salary, but then you have to say, okay, you did your field did not produce did not yield enough, so you have to reimburse for it. And then some of the soldiers will get because they cannot get the cut the salary of soldier because they get it in check form. They have to reimburse it out of your cash as well. That uh, so they don't care about this. Uh, their family, the family are uh, depending on his salary. So these are some of the horrible adverse. Well, in one of the question is that, that the military is protected. That is uh, is protecting the nationalism for the interests and the religion. Well, actually, they use the right. They are not national. They they, they are not patriotic. They will, may use the word nationalism, but they don't. They are only looking for their self interest for their own family, for their businesses, and that uh, for especially for the elite. That from the general level to the higher level. Well, they are the worst and that they are exploiting. They use the words that they were they are they 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 know which words are popular and they will use the, these words to do that as well. And that this military leaders are the one who use the words over. They use a, use a democracy as a word and they will also tell them, but that's how they do it. Sometimes I'm thinking, like, are they making a joke? Because it's so funny because uh, they will say things that, that are really not in line with as well. When it comes to uh, that... Um, they don't. Uh, they don't. For that they, there is no. Uh, there is no equality for the religious minority as well. We have Muslims. We have Christians, and we have uh, the Hindu. The Hindus and Christians in Arabia, but they don't have a freedom of the freedom to pray as well. And that uh, they would be uh, often uh, that uh, that uh, there are also uh, that there. Are, there the if uh, they, there are also the problems uh, if they want to uh, if they want to uh, practice uh, their religion then the, even the officers uh, uh, they will not care for it and don't, it's not important that you are a soldier you focus on soldier don't think about that uh, don't think about this and they will not encourage them to have uh, their rights as well and that uh, they would they, they would not give uh, the right to the to the minor, religious minorities to be able to practice their 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 what they their value as well. So there are a lot of oppression, like you say, there are different forms of uh, oppression uh, in the military against uh, the others. Often the the, the military will say to, to, to about patriotism. They will talk about Mabata, the the Buddhist religion, Israelism, or they will talk about protecting the national interests or the people and that of the religion. But no, they they often say that. I I would say that you know they said you know, Myanmar is going to over to do no take over Singapore soon. But even the the you know, biggest uh, that they say that they often say that like, they they have a lot of hot air. I would say like they would say they would take over the one some of the best militaries in the world. But they would uh, there's nothing but wars. Uh, they would not care. They don't care about the structure. They don't care about the system. They don't care about the soldiers. We get the army. That uh, I would also uh, I will also add a few other points, and I have in the next round. Thank you for your question. Thank you for sharing us about uh, that uh, what is happening inside the military. Thank you, and I be I will also try to summarize what I have been listening so far, and that uh, so when it comes to uh, that the, you are, what you are saying is that. Uh, that uh, you know, the military doesn't like uh, honest people. The military also doesn't like. Uh, they would rather like those who exploit and those who would, uh, you know, that um, you know, they want uh, people who have followed the system and who have bribe the people and do that, and that 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 what works out there for and offer the soldiers. Therefore, the the soldier, the full soldiers, their human rights have been violated. They don't. They are treated as a modern form of slavery, and that uh, often that that those who are in the top level, they would. Uh, they would focus on uh, that uh, they will focus on making money out of it and that uh, that uh, 
even then uh, they asked the as for the even for the like uh, bribery and corruption they do it openly they use abuse their power and that is how to just to make money just to line their pockets so this is how the military running is they are also and also hesitate about uh, committing uh, you know cruelties again brutalities against the people and they wouldn't hesitate so long as it protects their interests i think these are the important points and that also that's something we all need to fight for so in the future that uh, i would like to go to the second round i'm talking about how do we see their future future military how do we see how do you what is what was your aspiration for the future military now that we are in the revolution we are revolution quite trying to change the system in the future there will be a future federal i mean that what kind of our values and what kind of skills what kind of standards should the military the future military has and you talk about the here about the military is abusing its power to be able to uh, you know generate man many for the military elite as well how do we prevent that how do we ensure that military is uh, that follow the rules and that uh, how can we change the system as well and that uh, that some of the uh, that if we don't have uh, these current uh, military leaders yeah. now that the military uh, focus on this military elite uh, so that we if we can do the reform then uh, what do you with what kind of you know the military reform do you want to see how what would be your inspiration how do you want to see the new uh, that uh, f future um, military so this is my uh, that, thank you for um, uh, answering this question captain Amuta. thank you for the question well and I, I think also I will also I respond to this question by taking into the points that the others uh, officers and the participants have shared before that we need to prevent this from happening and we need to ensure that this, this thing will not happen again. That currently in the military, that uh, you know that uh, we see that there is a lot of differences uh, differences between the between the position as well. And if you also look at the soldiers, uh, that also they because based on the based on the position that uh, the the living standards also vary. But all soldiers are civil servants. Uh, they we get a salary out of the public public budget, and we get we uh, get a salary. We have the right to enjoy our salary from it. But although that when you retire, then the soldiers are that what I would like to say is that uh, if you look at the other countries, and we also want to have a basic rights for the soldier, that in addition to their salary, they have to ensure that they have a place to that uh, stay, uh, that um, and that uh, also that to be able to get that uh, there are in other countries, uh, soldiers uh, will get uh, acquired as well. That right now that there is a difference between their position. There are also difference also in there because the salaries are very uh, different as well. That uh, without with this very minimal salary, salary that they're from the soldiers. Uh, do, uh, if you even if you save all your salary without using any, you'll never get it. You know you'll never be able to support yourself once you're you are you are you are once you retire. So that. Uh, I think it is also what happened is that there's also there are military were always, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, we'll say that uh, the, the soldier, the, the, the captains will say that, well, we have uh, that we have, uh, we stuff ourselves and then to fight for it. And that, uh, you know, they will always say those stories and to say that it's like, uh, you know, they would, uh, you know, brainwash them to follow that as well. And then uh, that they often, often that put this in this mind as well. And that uh, by the soldiers, by the, you know, staying blind and fighting and that uh, people can now sleep safely because of the soldiers, that uh, the soldier always give up all their words. They were often like sort of like portray the soldiers for soldiers as the, um like, like the, um, uh, like uh, like there's a hero for the people and that they will ask them to like oh we have fought for like seven days without drinking water without any food we were like making sacrifices and you can do it too but in reality in the, that that uh, you know if you look at that uh, we have a logistic forces forces but these forces are that um, although they can provide the supplies to the Arab but they use this station to that they will not give a soldier said that uh, their food and that they would uh, use abuse them what they are doing uh, after the soldiers to get money out of it as well that they are also taking uh, that what belongs to the people around to the soldier to make money out of it and that's what we don't want to, to happen in the future we need to change that the soldiers should be given the supplies they need to to be able to do that as well 
and that uh, and also that uh, right now that the, 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 the weapons that the military uh that the soldiers are doing they are produced by the Kasala or the military factory as well you know that uh, and so a military does not do business and that we should be very clear as well and that uh, in in the in the world there is only one military making uh you know get running a business is that uh, a military what does a military do military what well, the military is to support the people and that they they have a huge uh, that uh, defense budget what do they use they use it they the, what they use in the regiment is a very low in the battalion is very low as well and that uh and you have that we all have to invest in the MBHL and that uh, we are also that you have to invest a lot. These many are used, not used uh, for the soldiers. They are not giving that their military budget does not go to the salary as well. And that uh, that uh, they whenever they buy weapons, they buy cheap weapons, they buy the other uh, often that uh, they are trying to use uh, to the corruption and bribery. They are sharing among the top elite as well. That's well. So we don't want that kind of leadership. We go into the kind of system. We also ensure there should be a right for any quality there should be uh that uh, there should be a mutual respect and that uh, interdependence as well because that uh you know that, that it is uh that it is important to ensure that that the all the full soldiers have a role to play it is um, important to have a spirit of the union to say that we all work together for the for the nation as well it is also important because we have never learned about the real history what really happened in myanmar so the after you know 1988 we have military always has been uh, spreading uh that uh you know that uh very forms of uh, that they distorting the image of the history of what really happened i think it is important that we want soldiers to be a uh, genuine way to be those uh, they are beloved by the people as well we also need uh, that uh, that we also need to share our experience uh, to be so that uh, that the military cannot abuse uh, its power or its mandate as well we it, it is important that for all of us that uh, that uh, that uh, we cannot talk uh, that it's happened and that uh, we also need to ensure that um, we as well thank you Gabriel Muta, for sharing so that also gives us uh, also food for thought and that what we need to uh what we need to change and what do what what we should do also in the in for the distorted history as well that uh now i would like to um that ask uh, that um i would like to ask uh, and uh, to get, give the floor to other speakers that will open the floor for question and answer session so if you have any questions if you want to join the discussion please raise your hand now uh, that uh, and that in and uh, the next question to you is that for the Gabde Kimbatu, you said that um, the, some of the families of the soldiers do not get uh, proper like health care or the human rights or the access to education as well. How can we change that to happen for you also personally? How that, um, you know, how do you, what are the standards and what are the systems you want to see there for the future, future, uh, future military in Myanmar? What are your expectations? What do what standards you want to see? Right now, in we are in the revolution. That uh, we hope that rev we will win the that revolution. Once the revolution is over, the new military that we build for it will be for the future nation. It should be a military dignified and professional, and that stand by the people and that stands for the people. Right now, that uh, we people in Myanmar we have suffered greatly for the past uh, that for for the past uh, that. Uh, for the past uh, 70 years and the country is into deep into ruin as well and that uh, because of the abuse and because of the interference that this is happening and i see this as well because right now in a country that uh, that uh, military is uh, it is an organization that is in that uh, that is under the ministry and ministry which is ministry of defense as well and then yet uh, they are not doing what they have to what their, their job and that uh, that uh, the, the job of the military is to protect the people from the enemy and that instead of that uh, that um, you know that we we the reserve forces are to support them as well as that uh, in addition instead of doing that uh, you know the uh, that uh, we are see that the way the military is interfering in the politics and the economy and that is also good bad as well but i don't think that has anything to do with it as well rather than protecting the people rather than protecting the, the protecting that uh, you know the problems that uh, you know uh, that uh, as well that uh, 
it is uh it is not good for their country it is also bring uh the, the bad things for the uh, by losing the interest and opportunities for the country as well so that um you no know, in the future i mean what should be is i think the mindset needs to be changed the ideology is need to ideologies need to be changed as well that uh, i think that the people should come for that those should we have to make sure that the, there should be screening to probably to ensure that those who have the real uh, interest for the for the country as well and those who have uh who are aware of their their mind of their dignity and the profession as well so ethics they must be ethical and that they must be professional to do their work uh, that rather than uh, abusing to get many rate they are the soldiers are also civil servants so it is also important to have some guarantee for life for the work that they can do as well once that uh, they have uh, joined that uh, that uh, they once they have had the retirement they should at least be able to have some basic uh, that uh, as well that uh, for the especially for the soldiers i think they will need to have that uh, as discussed earlier that um, you know that uh, that uh, in the, when you look at the ground soldiers and that are uh, that are uh, on the others, uh, the often that uh, the 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 generals they have a lot of businesses and countable, and that uh, they have a lot of that and the that uh, and that all the others uh, will be. Um, and that uh, they would also like uh, they have businesses inside the country, also the country. I mean, there's so many businesses. But when you look at the food soldiers, uh, they are struggling to make angles. They are struggling to make their enemies, and they will not. They cannot care about their family, the the children. They cannot care about their children. The, the children cannot get education, and all that. This is happening. So I think uh, these such differences are horrible. That uh, it is not. It should not. We should not. It should not happen because when you the, all those who are in the same organization. We are all that, that we are all together. We are that uh, there should be a spirit of a camaraderie and that is sporting in the brotherhood. But no, we don't have that. And then with it, that's what I don't want to see for that. So ethical, professional, dignified, and that, and also the leadership should be kept there. There also be rules and regulations to ensure that the commander in chiefs are not abusing the power that is as well because. Uh, because when you give a power to a person and the and the person hold the power without any check and balance and they would be uh that uh, and they they would not going to give up the uh, they were not going to give up the power and they would do whatever they can to hold on to the power so we need to so that to make that they cannot so we cannot put a commander in chief the power unlimitedly as well so that every that uh, maybe like uh, every five years that the uh, commander in chief will only get five year terms and that uh, and he'll be voted by the people because we need uh, those people to do it in, in such a way that um uh, that we also need uh, the you know, good leaders uh, that is as well so that uh, you know the good leadership should have a good uh, leadership skills as well now we don't have a good leader so that uh, what they are doing is that they are just abusing this as well and that uh, that uh, it is it can also be very difficult uh, to as well they're using abusing their powers so what happened to that what happened to that uh, that to, to to the to this to the ground soldiers is that their rights are not uh, their their rights are not uh, given and that uh, sometimes they also uh, do not get leave for the for leave as well and that sometimes uh, it's even very difficult to get leave and you have to uh, bribe you have to give gifts to be able to get uh, to get uh, leave for the for the emergency issue as well that uh, as a, as a civil servant, you are entitled to get her. Uh, you are that to 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 get her uh, to get leave as well, and like uh, you can also get uh, time for the for for therefore if you get ill, you can also should be also be able to get leave as well. That what is happening is right now in the military is that uh, soldiers are losing human rights, and they are not treated as a human. They are treated as subhumans, and that uh, the they are being abused, and they are losing uh, that uh, they are their power. So I think it is sad that uh, they are losing now uh, being treated as human beings i think in the future everybody should be treated equally to be treated as uh, human beings that's what i would say that uh, it's also important that uh, we should not give up power that uh, the community should not be able to have their power or the longevity to abuse their power thank you for sharing so that's that your what you're sharing is that uh that's that uh, the future that the army that we want uh, for that as well why we are trying to do that we are trying to along with the revolution we are we have to win the revolution once we win the revolution that the, the future of the army should be um that uh for for the future military should be for the good of the all the soldier as well it is also important that we win the as well that uh and also we also uh want uh, that uh 
that there should also be opportunities for the for the soldiers to be involved in the building of the military process that in reality that uh, and it is important that uh, that uh, that's, that the full soldiers should be able to also do know about their rights, what they are entitled to, and to be able to go for their future nation in the in the with the with the least uh, the casualties or the impact possible. So I would like to now give turn to Captain Wright. Right now, Captain Wright, you are saying that the military is using uh, that uh, modern slavery. So how do we prevent that from happening? We are now in 21st century, and when we have to talk about about, you know that the soldiers are being treated as uh, you know treated as uh, treat, uh, treated as um, the slaves uh, that is uh, in a way ridiculous that we should be talking about stopping this but how do we prevent the soldiers from being used abused as slaves again what kind of mindset should we change what kind of uh, ideology what kind of system should we have to to in a way to keep the military in check to ensure that such abuse of power does not happen once again Thank you for uh, asking us the question and that uh, in a country that is yes, just true that, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, we, that we, it is important to protect the sovereignty. It is important to have a military to in order to ensure that that, that's, that is something we all agree on. However, uh, that, um, you know, that, uh, you know, that, yes, it is important to have a military, but what is happening right now is that, uh, you know, if you look at the terrorist army, it's unlike others, it's not unlike the others as well, because what we are saying is that, that we are already have, a lot of people have already shared about the abuse as well, as well, and that is, so we are also deeply involved in this revolution as well. What we hope is that in the future, when we can build a new um, new uh, federal new uh, federal army in the, for the, in the future, it is important that we need to change all the you know bad systems that uh, we cannot we cannot continue those systems we cannot inherit such horrible system we cannot carry them forward and then we need to have a democratic uh, system we need to build it and for to do that we need to change all this or uh, all these are uh, bad system as well that um, we see like uh, the soldiers who have uh, we need to to look at uh, those who have fought in the revolution that uh, apart from that apart from those who fight it in the in the demonstration all those who are here they all of all the soldiers were there they have changed the history and they have had this history so they are you know, so it's better they that it is important to do that because we cannot we cannot even talk about we just remove that out of the history completely because they are about that what they have done is not good it's not good it's the best system it still will not help anyone we need to ensure there is equality from the ground soldier to the to the commander in chief or the senior generals uh, that they should they should that there is a gap the gap is that it's like how you know the gap is so bad for a human being it's like it's different from the foot and the he the heads there should be equality i'm talking about all the soldiers should have a right to be trying very hard there should be recognition for them as well that uh in that the way had happening is that uh that that we that there should be equal right equal opportunities for the also all the soldiers involved that um that uh, often that uh like that the soldiers are not allowed to even you cannot have money you cannot buy a car you cannot do this if you're a soldier then you're limited and then for a soldier that they said no you're a soldier if you have money if you can save them if you can save money you should be able to go if you can get a you know in income and then no you're not allowed to have a car because you are a soldier you are if you're a soldier you're a full soldier you are not allowed to have a car and then you know some of the if they're junior officers and uh, they say that if you have a good car they will say that are you trying to you know uh that uh try to no, uh, put put your feet up and uh, get get sort of like up, uh, you know, showing up against the against the officer. No, it is that the soldiers need to feel that uh, if I try hard, then I can get benefit. If I can try get, I should be able to. There should be uh you know equal opportunity, equal rise opportunity. They should be able to do their best to able to have a uh, you know what they are entitled to. And then now uh, we have uh, some of the uh, if the sort of officers are not doing wrong, then uh, then uh, if a general is not doing the right thing then they should be able to see that that this is he is wrong and the soldier should be able to have the right to speak up then that then they will get her uh, also the recognition because right now that uh you know that uh even if uh, they are sending us to that even if the captain uh, will not say that this is wrong and then we are sending the soldiers to that no you are no we, uh, we are not we are not allowed to speak up you just follow it brightly as well another is that the uh, politics and the military and that uh that uh 
that uh, as a soldier, as a soldier, I don't think there is anything for them, for the military to involve in their politics. Politics, there are political institutions in Myanmar and the political institution. You have the elected government and you have others, they do their own business. That, uh, that uh, it is also, also important that, um, you know, they have their businesses already there and that it is important for them to, for them to do that. These systems are there, you, you should not interfere and that to let them, that do that as a soldier, you should be very proud of uh, being a soldier, being, uh, you know, uh, get, being able to do what you want. So I think for the politics, you have the politicians, you have uh, that they have to try their hard to be this way because you have to be that uh, they do support that, do something as well. Only through their support that you'll be able to also do uh, do that good thing as well. So that uh, it is uh, in a way that this, this, uh, there is also the interdependence in the system. So it is important that political politics should be never political institutions and political actors and the ministry do not have a play to that. It is also important to uh, that uh, remove the corruption and that as well. It is uh, the military and the army, military and the people should be aligned as well. You know that a soldier should be able to say, I am a soldier and that he wish be able to probably say that and go that as well. You know, the soldiers are afraid of going and, and among the people as well. And you say that, you you know, when you say that soldiers, people hate the soldiers, and that we need to, to address those issues so that it is important that soldiers themselves so it's also make sure that how do we stand by the people, how do we support the people, that it has to be very clear as well. That, that people were like, okay, I want to be the people to usually have a, this kind of ideas, I want to be a soldier one day, and that, you know, that it also, that I, that, uh, that I want to join the military, I want to join, be and become a soldier, and that a uh, soldier is something that people are hoping. The soldier also need to be supplied. A military also get the, the, the necessary support from the government, and the people should be proud to join the military as well. Another uh, is about the religion as well, as well that uh, you know, they use religion as a, as a way to, um, to do that. They will push that. They so they will push them to be to uh to uh do uh, that. There should be when it comes to religion that there should be a freedom of religion. They will use that word and they're like, oh, this guy is Indian, Kala, or that is a Jewish word. You can say that they're Muslims or they the from the Indian descent as well, and that also lead to people to feel a feeling of frustration and that they're looking looked down as well. And we need to change that. We uh, this is something we all have to be careful, and it's important also to like others have said before. The suggestion should be given full rights as a civil servant and human rights. Just give you an example that, um, you know, that, uh, for example, like if you are uh, structured uh, that, you know, that, uh, that uh, you know, systematically organized, well organized 10, pers 10 fighters can won win against uh, that it is not uh, like a you no know, systematic or not well structured 100 people. So we need to focus not just on the quantity, but also on the quality, because it doesn't matter how big your, your forces are, is it how, how big the military is, how do you, if you don't have a quad, you don't have the, if you don't have the, you know, that the quality or the skills and that's it is no good that it is important that uh, we need to have that as well that the soldiers a soldier should be like a have a you know look like a soldier should act like a soldier should be ethical like a soldier as well that uh, you know there is a saying that uh, you know that uh, that if you don't have to fight then that you are uh, you have to uh, to train or then they work for the and they work for the interests of the people. All these mortals are really good in the military, but do they do the public interest? You no, know, just for show. They do it for show and they will do like uh, you know, they will just uh, you know wear the uniform and get photo taken and that's it. You know, they don't really uh that because or they were like uh, selling and uh, no like a low price food. No, they don't do it really. They just do it once and they are being military were asked to do that. You know, they have to take loss for it because uh, you know we are selling it and they're losing the price well and they don't want to do this because they are being forced to do that as well you no know, i'm a soldier soldier fight for soldier there to protect the country this way if not they train that's it the soldier do not do and other thing is they focus on their job another thing is that um, you know that um that uh, that uh, they have a that they, it is also important to have a good quality to ensure the quality uh, that, uh, that the officers need to be out uh, that, that the troll was. So it is also important to train them to ensure that the, the officer get good training. We also need to do that. The soldiers are trained properly to have a system that is uh, we need uh, we are the federal federal army uh, that uh, we have to try. We have to train. Also, we also have to develop the skills as well. We also need to also to remove all the bad history of the military and the officers uh, that 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 has been uh, running the despotic army. Thank you for your discussion points. 
And I think uh, we have a hand raised. So we'd like to invite the speaker. And if other people also have questions, so please uh, raise your hand and we'll invite you as well. You can also use a Q&A or you can also uh, use the comment box to also to ask questions. But who you can uh, speak now. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Well, I would like to, uh, so I know that with the, with the, I would like to know about the, for the CDM soldiers, because of it's, uh, now it's the uh, rainy season started and it will be very difficult for them. So what kind of support are you getting from the NUG? I would like to know for that. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. We can hear you. Do you have any other questions? Yes, second question is that uh, about a week ago, what happened is that I think it was probably in Tiganju, when a person was uh, shorted and the other person was tried to arrest and then they got, got injured, all that. Um, you know, the other person who got injured, uh, that um, I mean, he was not the person who was being targeted. So that I think uh, he was trying to uh, do arrest, uh, you know, trying to stop the shooting from happening. He got, the other person also got hit. You know, that among the civil servants also, you know, that among the SAC also, that there could be, uh, there will be those who are, you know, standing strong to support the, the SAC as well. And then I, that's, I see that in the video, he was not the one who ensured that he was trying to protect. But what about them? What kind of, the kind of people, how do we, how should we be, uh, you know, that how should we just as well? Like they are not, no, they are not taking, you have like CDM who are taking a lot of difficulties and challenges and you have those who will protect the SEC with their, their, with their life and with their, and you know, they are totally committed to protecting SEC. What kind of action should we take against them? How do we, what kind of judgment will there be for those who are, you know, working for the SEC uh, wholeheartedly? What should there be? Thank you. Thank you. I think we have the two questions. Maybe Captain Amute, you can answer these two questions. Can you uh, summarize the question? First question is about the CDM soldiers. Uh, the CDM soldiers and officers now with the season, the rainy season, and what, how, how do you get your you know, support for that as well? Do you receive any support from the NUG? That is the first question. Second question is that uh, there are among those, uh, in the, not, just in the not just the military, there are also others outside the military who are you know, really supporting them, the SAC strongly. So what kind of action should there be taken can against them. So please answer uh, what you can, the part about you can, yes. For NUG, in those who are in the liberated areas, uh, yes, we get some, we have, we, we will report that the NUG, when we report the NUG, we also get uh, some support from the, from the NUG as well. They also support for the living as well. There are some support as well, so that we have to register, we have to register to the NUG, and then you have to register with the, the liberated areas to get some support as well. That's one thing we can do. Another chart, another thing is that uh, in Myanmar, in some of the areas uh, that uh, we'll say that, uh, well, that uh, some of the people, the question is a lot of people have been blinded by it here. So you know, they don't even, like I said before, that they, we don't have access to what really happened on the ground. So that since we were young and when we grew up and we always uh, grew up with the problem, Propaganda, we get brainwashed by the military so that we were, you know, under that is as a military for a long time. So that a lot of people who grew up with that, they don't really know. They don't know what is the truth. So for us, only when we, when, when, you know, when I first joined the military, I didn't know about any of that as well. And that uh, I don't know about that. This is that, that, uh, we, that, uh, you know, the, 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 the um, in a way for me is that the head of the state is like the president or the prime minister. But, uh, you know, what I know, we didn't know about that. We know that the general dentistry at the time, it was a senior general dentistry is the biggest, that's the highest, but he is the, uh, the only one. We don't know about that. I thought that the military, that uh, military, that was, so we didn't know that he was, he, we, we know that he was the, we used to thought that he was the top leader of the country. That, uh, you know, as a soldier, you don't have much choice as well. You don't have to choose as well. That uh, you drive the military, you grow up in the military, and that's how you live. I don't have anything. They don't, have, they don't know anything else. They don't know how to live. They don't know anything about that. They 
they don't get uh, you know the amount they get they never really get as well that so after 2011 with the uh, you know a lot of people have access to facebook and that even when you get facebook and then even before when the countries other countries get facebook you know when the other countries are using mobile phones in myanmar and i still remember it costs one million jets or that uh what that it, it costs about uh about uh, five million jets to one million jets for it uh, for a sim, sim card that was the that was then before so we didn't have asset to it as well like uh, we were like uh, we didn't have a chance to go to what is happening only with the social media Media, that we start to realize what is happening or what is going on in the in Myanmar inside the country that uh, you know it's not just as in Myanmar there are also those uh, if you look at it that uh, with the to the Facebook or to the social media we'll be able to open our eyes not just to what's happening inside Myanmar but also what's going on now we're able to see that okay what are we see the other countries we have a president you have a prime minister other countries are working actively that uh, the military is to protect the people and that uh, that uh, and that uh, the military do not have a role to play in that uh, politics or in the um, you know um, or in the, the other phase of it that we don't know. But uh, you know, but there's some of the soldiers uh, they don't have access to that kind of information. They read uh, the military military daily newspaper. They just watch the military um, that um, run uh, that uh, propaganda television shows. So they don't know. They grew up in the military. Some of the soldiers who grew up inside the military, some of them they were able to break the mold. They were able to break the you know format as well and that uh and that that when they when they see the soldiers are being beaten they say that that why are you being beaten like that uh, that is like they are were working hard and yet uh you know that uh that uh, that, uh, that the officer will abuse their power to do that so no some of them don't ask oh you're a soldier you have to take it you know some of the children of the soldier if you look at it as well they don't have that they were they were like uh, they were brainwashed to that you have to be right to the military or anyone the, the salary is that the salary of the soldier does not come from the pocket of the military These these are the soldiers are civil servants. They get the salary from the public budget. But the way they build it is that these all these uh, taxes, all these, uh, they, they were adding as if like the, the salaries and the, all the benefits we get come from the pocket of the um, pocket of the uh, the military elite or the, the, the senior officer. So the last point I would like to make is that. So, that uh, even even now uh, even during the time of the Buddha, but the Buddha, there are people who follow Buddha, and there are also who do, who uh, try to you know who try to act like a Buddha. So so the they would or the in a way the arch enemy of Buddha, but he has his own way. He has also his followers, and that there are one of the people who grew up and a lot of uh, propaganda brainwash. When you are not taught what really happened in Myanmar, and people think that as if like a military is the savior, military is important. If the China or Thai or India. Are going to be their big enemy and that we need to military to save us no that we don't need it as well that uh in that time um, you know every time that the, every time we look at this history then every time is the military targeting their people as well people people as the enemy as uh, they uh, they add as if uh, they are important to protect the people and yet uh, they are the new that um, the way they add has always been again this as well they are the, they, they are the ones who are uh, treated the people as the enemy I think it is important people do get exposure because they don't have a, their eyes are closed, their brains are closed, they, they, they were being brainwashed on it, so they follow that as well. And then they follow blindly, they will follow blindly because they don't know any others. It is important also to reach out to them as well. What I'm saying is that they would trust them, they would be easily, they would, they could be easily um that as well. So I think it is important to to help them to be able to uh to uh to, to, to understand that as well because if not then it is also important to be uh to make them very clear and think care carefully about what they stand for and what they believe in. Uh that I uh, you do, do help them also be them as well. Thank you. I would like to add to the what I just want to add one point to do the your to the point discuss as well in that uh, what happened in Thing Anju and then we have a CDM as well as on the uh, that uh, about taking action about the CDM. I think it is also important to the crimes that they we can also take it. What I understand is that you can take action against that those are non CDM according to the, 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 uh, their action for the, what they are going to do. So that I'm resistant. I'm resistant is a military or military approach of uh, dealing with the political situation. So that I think uh, and that uh, harming that that uh, harming. 
the I mean, the civil servants is not in the energy policy. It is also prohibited by the military. So that for the for the civilian civil servants, they should not be uh, that. Uh, we need we also need to think about rather than you know using weapons. I think it is important to convince them. To, you know, we also and uh, the military uh, the military we have also gone through that uh, propaganda of the military as well. All of it. We also have suffered under uh, the the brainwash as well. We also need to think about it and try to understand that as well. In this revolution, I think it is important that we need to uh, raise awareness about this revolution and mobilize that non-CDM as well. Also, in the in the live comment, also we seen that uh, that uh, we have also somebody who wants to uh, join the discussion and. Uh, and the, um, uh, the, the one of the listeners, she said that she also has supper, but she also when uh, when she is also leave that outside that you have to see what is uh, what you'll be able to see the reality of what is happening as well. So we also here has a question here has so that uh, those who leave their military and that uh, so what about their family members uh, that can you how, how can you also share that what is happening um, in the military as well that. Uh, and then maybe how can we share the information with those others? Maybe uh, Captain Kimama Togan shared that how can we help that uh, if you leave the military, how can we share that, you know, those are family members don't have access to important information. How can we do that? Well, I would say that uh, before the coup, that I think it is depends on the situation on the what the situation of Myanmar in context before the coup and after the coup. I think it were also different. So I think and if you can compare the the socioeconomic situation of Myanmar before the coup and after the coup, you can see in the military, like I we we often say that as well. And that uh, when you try when you go inside the military, it's like in a new it's on a different wall. You know that you don't you are you are different from you are sort of like living in a separate wall, separate from the entire world as well. That uh, and also we are also what you're also seeing is that you are not allowed to go out and that uh, they are putting fences, they are putting a lot of security as well. You're not allowed to even to get to a grocery shopping and they don't have access to the outside. They are trying to get, the, get them out of it as well. And then what they will do is that they will say things that they will ask you to listen to that as well. They will often explain to that, that to say that as like, uh, you know, because of the electoral fraud and that they have to, uh, to, to they have to, uh, you know, take over the country. That That's also, that's how they will do the propaganda that uh, you know that, that if you look at that the, the, the salary they are making and then uh, now that the inflation with the common rise of the company how they surviving this simply is not possible because before that they will be uh, indebted uh, further and further because they cannot survive it they do make it also be harder so this is happening just compare the socioeconomic situation and that the challenges they are facing so that with the salary and that with their prices how are they about how they surviving they will not be able to survive as well I think it is important to look at their lives as well. So the, the situation, how they were before the coup and what is happening after the coup. If they compare their socioeconomic economic they have the purchase power, they will be realize that it's not true. So they may be, uh, you know, kept in a blind position, but they know the inflation, the price of the commodities are going up. They know the inflation is high and that they should realize that what, who is separate, who is causing the, all this trouble, that they need to understand that for any reason that uh, they, may, they may be, you know, inside their military, uh, for, I understand that they 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 already realize to extend that things are not going well and that they may not be stuck inside the in the, the military for other reasons as so well. I also like to invite another speaker um to ask questions. So Zoom, please. Okay. Thank you. What I would like to know is that uh so we talk about the ability that you are future federal army or the what are the expectations? What do you want? What do you want to happen? So we would like to know when this uh, future army will be established. This is how what I want to do. Also, that will it be started by the NUG or will it be all the CDM soldiers will you know work together to to build it as well? And you know when will that start? Uh, I also like to know that. Thank you for the question. I would like to give a turn to Captain Wright to respond to this question. And we also have another question in the comment that I do for you, Captain Wright, that uh, why selecting uh, sele that selecting, you know, that uh, selecting that that uh, candidates for the for the candidates and that uh, and that also only those who have, uh, you know, who can corrupt who can uh, you know bribe where will get a good position so can you also explain to that as well that when will the future federal army will be established one will be established can you uh, answer the two questions thank you 
thank you thank you for thank you thank you to the sister also for asking the question that uh that i was also i would try to read that you know, so question yes when you say when you select the you know that uh you know candidates for the candidates rather than you know qualities that they are also focusing more on the numbers too they get more more of this work because often you have the sense of these uh, you know generals and there's those who can also afford it who have the means who want to become a soldier that has uh, an officer for that they have the money to pay for it and that they will get a lot of money to do that as well that uh, what we are seeing is that are happening like as you have to provide a one table like a uh, food and alcohol for that as well and that uh, you know that will make sure too that uh, you can get to this level but you have to provide of course they use it in a different ways but they i mean like actually it's uh, it's simply um that you know that is using uh that that that's how they say it that uh, you have to show respect if you show respect then you go your son will be selected as a as a candidate to the officer training train officer training academy school or school there's some of them uh do, who try really hard to be able to become a candidate as well there are those who became officer like that so there are different contests you know different ways it is true that uh, there is a bribery and corruption it is true that you have to pay many we have seen that happen and that uh, for the future building of the future of federal army is important building of the future of federal and military is important but uh no for security reason we can there are things we can which we are not going to say due to the security reason but we are starting to prepare for it and while we are preparing for it we also focus on where do we start and what we got to go it we'll do that as well and that um that uh so it may not be uh that uh that uh so the sometimes we will not be able to share publicly with the people, but uh, we have that the concerned ministries, concerned leaders are uh, need to be involved. All the stakeholder needs to be involved. There are also some was being done on the ground, but uh, for security reason, that will not be able to uh, publicize largely as well because without a strong foundation i think and so we will not be able also to disclose it openly publicly as well we are trying we are making efforts for it we are for the future of fitting of a future federal army but we need to have policy we need to have a clear principles and that uh that we also need to have that because uh that's right we need we need a constitution of the military we need to have a rules and regulation in place as well because what we can some of the some of the, the, the organized, some of the you know constitutions or the rules and regulation, if they are real, if they're genuine, if they really implement them, that is good. Uh, but uh, you know that the, all the military rules and regulation, they are good. Uh, but uh, however, that uh, they do not, they do not actually practice them because that uh, they just you know use them to um, you know that the, all the rules and regulations are remain in the books and they are. Uh, uh, they are power hungry and they are uh, too hungry for uh, for many for exploitation. So it has also have a in a way that has a destroyed their, their military as a reputation as well. And until 2022, they are the, until that they have after the coup and that they the they the, the act that they are doing as well. So there are good things in the military. There are rules and regulations. There are many good things as well. We need to use it as we can, but they are, we cannot use everything, of course. But uh, we all we do identify what is good and what is not good, and we will do that as well. Like you have explained for the future of federal army. When will the future of federal army start to operate? When it will be hard to say. But right now we can see that we are already starting to work on it, and that uh, you know, with the revolution, we with the, along with the revolution, we are also working to uh, that we are providing uh, that CDM soldiers, and we are also providing also has so have uh, providing uh, the advice on it as well. What we can do, with so these are things we can do and uh, we are doing what we can what is important is that we have to focus on the revolution during the time then after the revolution then we also need to uh to to make changes to make a new as well this is something we have to do as well and the thirdly i also would like to say that uh, uh that uh that uh you know inside the military as well that uh that even even among the civilian, uh, among the, the among civilian, those who support as well, that uh, it is also important that uh, you know that uh, we also need international recognition as well. That uh, and we cannot add in a, such a way that uh, they they have associated. We cannot have, have our men side like them as well. That if we when we won the when we win the revolution, it is important those are remaining soldiers. They had to. We cannot kill them or we cannot kill the soldiers because uh, we are not as easy because these are there we cannot lift them we cannot lift them right but during the it's during the during the interim period we have to do the restructure that uh, it is important that our policy and our actions uh, that uh, you know that we have to bring them into our policy they may they need to meet their 
And that's why if they don't meet the, the, our standards or the, the rules that we have, then, then they will not be able to go to you to serve. But uh, it is also important that uh, those are CDMs, that they will not be the same as the CDMs who have risked their lives and then who have uh, risked their belief as well. Because of course, they will not be uh, to do the same because we have to distinguish clearly because the sacrifices that they have made are very different. And that, uh, you know, that uh, if they want to live in the position and they want, only want the democracy, that democracy is, um, you know, succeeded that they cannot uh, they cannot just uh, wait until like everything has gone on, on it. So I think it is important uh, that we had that there are plans for it. Uh, but right now in this revolution, so we have to focus so much on the revolution. Revolution is that for us is the most important for us. For the CDM as for all of us, that the, the, the revolution is the most priority, but we are working on it. Thank you, Capri Rai, for the, your answer that we still have some time. So I would like to, I would, first I would like to collect the questions from those who have raised their hand and then I will also uh, the, wrap up the session. We have, uh, we'd like to give the floor to first to go away. Thank you. So my question on the today's topic is that uh, we have uh, the civil servant uh, CDM, we have the military CDM, right? But the, now the military CDM, so when they have uh, that uh, military CDM that uh, for the people soldier, that those who, uh, who have joined the CDM, and then once they join the CDM, the people are very happy to have them. You know, they have that they have that you have joined our side, and they respect. We respect them as well. So, what about that for the for the for the average citizen, the respect and that uh, you know that uh, you you will see you will see a lot of uh, for the for the social medias, and they are also happy that the people have that uh, soldiers are joining the CDM. That rather than talking about the happiness, I think how can they uh, they can also um. That has support the CDM so the soldiers. How can that uh, people, you know, in, in addition to the expressing our joy and that that our the relief that you are joining us and supporting us, how can the people support uh, people support you? Thank you, thank you for the question, Koiji. And then I will we will respond to the questions uh, together. I would like to invite next person. I would like to give um, the floor to Sozo. Sozo, please ask your question. Thank you. I was listening to the talk show and that uh, often full soldiers are oppressed and they are being bullied and that uh, they are they also make threats against them and that uh, that uh, some of them they uh, they may not they may not be they may not want to follow orders but they have no choice. I think I'm very right at the week I'm right put it that uh, during this revolution that um, you know now is also time to focus on the revolution that uh, that um, maybe that uh, you know federal army will be uh, the next uh, future as well. It's a uh, giving priority to the revolution in a way is a uh, fighting against the SAC soldiers. In doing so, that you have also the, if you're fighting against the SAC, you're also fighting against the other soldiers as uh, that's other soldiers as well in this revolution the sac are we we are fighting we are fighting the soldiers not they not they not they you know there's you no know, the you know the ground commanders not the generals as well because those who are acting uh, security on the ground so that also makes me think that uh, when we try to think about this then what about the um you know these are the oppressor we are why shouldn't we be saving shouldn't we be saving them because they are oppressed they don't know any better uh, they they don't they have no critical thing they they are not even think critical they just follow blind as well, when is that when is this revolution will be fo focusing so much on the uh, this well, shouldn't we be convinced them to join us as well? That you know, join our side. So I would like to know what, what will be what will make our revolution more effective in that sense. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. I have taken note of the question. Now, now I would like to invite uh, a. So this is my, um, I'm asking this question a second time. Okay. Yes, please do. So there's a, so among the soldiers who have joined the CDA, you also have a lot of uh, those who have technical experts. So is NUG really supporting them? Are they saving them? Are they sort of like giving them a place to, to be able to contribute to the revolution? Are, they, are their skills being uh, utilized effectively? Uh, we I can we can hear the last part. Please repeat again. 
among the CDM soldiers, um, among the CDM soldiers, there are also those who have the technical knowledge as well, like from the Air Force, from the Navy, although you know, like that as well. Are they, so we are talking about them. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are a lot. They are giving a lot of advice on the on the public platform, like the Facebook. But are they, are there advice that they are they are giving? Uh, are being uh, being uh, you know taken into consideration? Are they given position to contribute to that? So are they working when you know in hand in hand with the with the NUG on the ground? Anything else? Yes. Another question is that. Uh, that so people go the topic uh, that is not related to the today's school topic of the people's school for the CDM. It doesn't matter which wherever which unit or department they are coming from. Some of the CDMs, uh, like that, uh, that uh, they have uh, like a court. That some of them they, they got, some of them cannot be, cannot even now uh, you know get any kind of communication. So what about those that they are CDMs that they may be left behind for those who are not able to register? So what kind of guarantee uh, will you have for the CDMers uh, that is uh, for the energy or the CBR of your PH that can you know to be able to get a recognition as a CDM? The CDM card, CDM card you're talking about is for the military CDM or that, um, or there's, uh, or the, you know, or the civil service CDM. And for the other CDMs, some of the CDMs don't have uh, any of the cards. So to, I think also they cannot contact, they, they, don't, they cannot contact or that, uh, you know, NUG or the CRPH as well. That's what I would like to know what kind of, uh, you know, uh, the plans are there for them. Thank you. We have four questions. So that uh, the first question is uh, how can the people can contribute to support the CDM soldiers and officers, and then also that uh, well we use uh, also use uh, you know mobilization to do this well have the have the that how the, the how the advice of the experts of the have been used effectively as well. The last question is that. Uh, and also that how kind of guarantee are we uh, do we have for that as well? So we have the uh, we have the questions and that. Uh, We'll give the we'll give the uh, all the speakers uh, to the to the to the to the to the our uh, we gi we'll give all the questions to our speakers and then one of them you can take whatever question we want to answer as well. So I would like to start by Amuta. So we have the four questions. Do you want to uh, please uh, please respond to appropriate question and then uh, and uh, give give your uh, closing remarks, please. Thank you. Can you give me the questions? Uh, okay, so we have four questions. One is the, about the, how can people support the CDM officers and soldiers and to show their support for the, for them joining the CDM. So that's the first question. Second question is that, uh, you know, that uh, often the ground soldiers are the, those who are being oppressed by the military and then the end, uh, you know, rather than uh, fighting against them, just uh, you know, that annihilating them, I think it wouldn't be also important to think about mobilizing them or like convincing them to join our side as well. Some of the military officers will join the CDM and say uh, that uh, you know, for soldiers and officers who are joined here, they have uh, they are they have the technical expertise. Are they being used as well? And that uh, you know, what kind of guarantee we have for this for the CDMers or for the from the NUG? So you can answer any questions you want. Um, for the CDM, most of the CDM soldiers, uh, the, our ideas and our that we are used as well. That is sometimes they use it, not everything. No, they not be able to use all the our uh, the ideas and the, the the advice that we have as well. Because there are also CDM soldiers are working also on the ground system medical so that uh, we are doing a lot of as well. But not everything, of course, can can be used right now. To another question, I would like to answer is that. Uh, for the CDMs, uh, to for them to join the more CDMs, uh, so that uh, you know that we talk about them, uh, because we, for me, in my opinion and my personal opinion, I would say that uh, you know if we can win this revolution without you know without hearing another again, another another again, it, that would be good. That that's what we are hoping for. That we want uh, that that if we don't have to shoot another bullet, and that's good for us because you know that uh, if we can uh, get more CDM to join it, that if we have only if a male only one remains, then we can remove it easily and 
that uh, that uh, if we can, we also would like to join more people to join the CDM. That would be good as well. And that uh, that goes our CDM to become a CDM. I think also we that's why we organize such talk shows. We also reach out to them as well. We also uh, give them channels to to join it as well. We are also raising mobilizing raising awareness to join the CDM as well because so just joining the CDM is a good way as well. That uh, there are things. Um, I mean for them is sometimes it's easy to join the CDM. So it's not as well that. Uh, you know, there are also when we got those who are, we call it that the watermelon, those who are supporting, they're not able to leave, but they are also if they're trying to give us information or support the movement from inside as well. You know, those who are in the light, if uh, those who are in the LID or that uh, you are in the, they know that the revolution, they also, uh, that they will not fight in the, the in the uh, coalition. So we are not considered a CDM, they are considered as a prisoner of war. So there will be a different uh, way to treat them because they are prisoners of war, uh, not the CDM. So that's my shared opinion, but we are trying to move more people as well. That's a, those who support us with information. Those who can make their option, who can make their choice, they can they do that. And if they are not, they cannot. They have no choice on the ground. Then uh, they will not be will not be able to really see they are really the CDMs or not because. Uh, the, the sometimes those who are joining into the we found it in the red area they are burning villages they are attacking them we cannot consider them as uh, you know that uh, civilians that we are not going the CDN, so we have to fight them and that's uh, we have no choice but to uh but to fight such uh, such soldiers if they are captured then they will be prisoners war and not cdms thank you for answer i would like to give now a chance to give about tone to the four questions that you want to add to anything to their questions ask please do so and also where they're going to also share your message especially to the ground soldiers who are on the ground what will be your takeaway message for them thank you in myanmar the situation is getting worse i think it is i think we need support to help the cdmrs i think it is also important that we also need to that we also need to support the people among each other as well. So I think it is important that please support each other because the times are tight, the times are high, the, 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 the difficult because the country is at the brinks of collapse and that people are suffering. So if you can help others, please do so. Not just the CDM soldier, but also the other as well. And to my message to that, um, do that, do the do the do the soldiers who are still in the army is that uh, please join us in this talk and that uh, and so please re try to realize what is happening on the ground and that uh, there are they, we are we are also uh, trying to mobilize them as well and those who are in the front lines are also we are reaching out to them as well that uh, so there are also some who are leaving the the, the front line forces who are joining on a on a smaller level from the regiments as well those are sometimes those are joining without any weapons they are trying to uh, that i believe that uh, some of the people might, might want to join us but they have no opportunities yet so for as for the uh, defense forces uh, that uh, that uh, it is uh, that often the that for the defense forces, they don't want to attack the oppressed soldiers, but to protect the lives and the properties of the people is important. To protect the people is is difficult, and that's why they are fighting on the ground. So all these are you know fightings that the the, the war that we're waging is to protect the people. So we want the revolution to be over very soon. We want a nation to to want to go in the coordination that contribute to the revolution as much as we can. If you can contribute, many please contribute. If you can contribute, uh, assistance as well. I'm a CDM officer, so that uh, I cannot donate. But Whenever I have the time, I provide uh, assistance. I provide the care. So you do what you can to support uh, to contribute to the revolution. That uh, you know it is important to get that kind of support as well. And for those who are inside the military, so the more the the, the longer you stay, the, the more you oppress you will be. I think it is also important to stand by the people. So that's what I, the message I would like to give is: uh, stop being, stop remaining there and being oppressed by the by by by, by the elite. Uh, that uh, you need to leave as soon as we can. As a less uh, speaker, I would like to invite Captain Wright as well. So Captain Wright, as a last speaker for today's show, uh, that uh, what will be the message you want to give uh, that uh, what you want to uh, share to the people? Thank you. Firstly, I would like to say that uh, I would like to say the people that uh, you know for the for the for to the CDMers, to the CDM soldiers, to the CDM uh, the no police and to the CDM civil servants and that uh, for I would like to say that thank you for the support because uh, people have been supporting us a lot and that I would like to say thank you 
before that because right now we we the people have continued to support us uh, i would like to say thank you for the support and we value your support and we appreciate it and uh, to as to the questions i just want to answer uh briefly that um you know rather than you know fighting that we rather uh, we rather do the side war and we rather try to bring people to the awareness and that as well so that we can save the casualties to the minimum that uh that if we can that will also bring a close revolu revolution uh, that if we can win the revolution as soon as possible that will be good for us because we don't want uh, the people to, to suffer that we have to wage war because of the because of the bad because of the really bad situation on the ground we are doing on the one hand we are mobilizing but on the other hand we have no, we have no way but to to fight to defend the people defend ourselves as well i think it is also important that uh, it is also important to begin to get the support from the people, like uh, Captain uh, that Captain uh, Kevin Barton said before. It is important to support uh, the part the people, and we also will also like to please help also the the military, the CDM military, uh, CDM and police, CDM or civil civil some uh, these help us because we need uh, your support as well. In addition, I think with the energy and that, uh, and also for the energy, I think we are also uh, working together with the, the Sudan soldier as well. And that there are those who are not uh, probably uh, not uh, deeply inside. We are also be doing very hard. I'm also working together with the with the, with the energy as well. That uh, is part of the um, policy and that uh, strategy we are working working on it as well for the for the those who want to join the CDM that. Uh, those who uh, don't want to accept that you know that uh, that uh, injustice and if you are genuine and that they are uh, they we always welcome the door and the door is also open no one is there is no uh, such thing as being late or early that we want uh, you to uh, join us as much as that possible that uh, so that uh, we can uh, that we can establish uh, that it's a democratic uh, future federal um the federal military that's that's the spirit that we want uh, when them to uh, when them to have in in joining the revolution thank you thank you for your answer now for sharing about uh, what is happening inside the military and so thank you for sharing also what should be there you know consideration what should be the standards we should have as well we'd like to thank uh, captain amuta captain uh that is uh captain wright and captain Kibabato. thank you for joining as well so to the um to the to uh to the audience are going following us i hope that this session has been giving you a lot of food for thought and that we hope that that will also contribute to the to the building of a strong nation and that I would like to wish you all um, health and uh, uh, our greetings to all the all the those who are listening us on the video platforms. Thank you for joining us this week, and hope we were this. You also join us next week. Thank you. <laughs>